sellout in the Bannon era at Rutgers. West Virginia lets it rip to start, and Scott can't connect. Rutgers comes away with it. Greer. Look left for Jones. They let it fly. And Moss the rebound. Moss getting the start today. His 11th start of the season. Both teams will play to man-to-man -to, -man to start things off, Bob. And interesting enough with this team, when you watch Rutgers, they really need to get the performances from Greer, I believe, who's been playing very well for them as of, as of late. When he plays well, their team comes off pretty good. Lost with it after Pierce. Shot clock at eight. Scott in traffic for Reed. Rebound comes off to Billet. Billet will take that three and hit. Well, when you watch Jeff Billet, obviously he is just continues to move up the pace. With all-time three shooters in this league, he needs one more to move into the top five. The thing about him is that he's so sharp and so smart on the basketball floor. Very infrequently does he make mistakes. The holding foul away from the ball against Rutgers. For Billet, number two in the Big East in three-point percentage. Dante Jones called for the foul. Billet at 46% from three-point range, averaging 13.4 points per game. His brother Todd is committed to Rutgers. And Dante Jones with that last foul bomb, reaching on the screen a little bit. Kent on the right, in the right corner. Defensively, they're really going to need him offensively also to step up his game down low. West Virginia with the ball down three. Played 90 seconds of this first half. Ball deflected out of bounds. Last touch Jones. It will be West Virginia basketball. A little unsure of themselves so far. Shooting the basketball from the mid-range or so. West Virginia, I think anytime you play on the road, you want to try to get something going towards the basket. Get the officials on your side a little bit maybe early on. Armstead for Kears. They give it down low to Moss. Good luck. There you go. Good results, though. He ends up walking, though, Bob, but it sets a different tone when he goes through the lane just like that. He forces some guys to put a body on him to get some bumps through the lane. Dale Catley thought he was hit before. Greer with a three. No good. Rebound third by Gorey. Rutgers missed a couple of shots as well. And for the tie and no good. And rebound by Kent. Quickly out for Greer. Here's missed the shot. Greer with a fast footwork there. Rutgers will just settle in. Billet has the only field goal of the game, a three. And it has been quiet, so to speak, if you will. It's quiet in this building right now. Rutgers haven't given them anything to get excited about. What a pass by Billet to the Hodgson. Those two guys, the seniors, they're looking to make a run for those two guys. Kevin Banner would love to see this season end out on a high note. Kind of to reward those two guys for all the years they've put in here at Rutgers is Dale Catlin will try for 20 seconds to talk things over and probably talk to them about, hey guys, we have focused in from that 17-foot range. We have the back rim down tight, but we're not scoring, so let's start going to the basket. All right, good spacing of the floor here for Rutgers. Yeah, and a good read also. Hodgson Reed, the defensive guy who opens up, looks for the basketball, he cuts back door. They've been very comfortable with one another. Right down the middle of the lane. Nobody steps in for West Virginia. When they do, Goree's is a touch late. No weak side help at all, so you end up with a bucket. And Rutgers goes up 5-0. You see, they are the Iron Men of Rutgers. Hodgson had 18 points in the loss at West Virginia earlier this year. Billet had 17. Combined, they made 10 three-pointers in that game. And they average about 35 minutes apiece, just about Bob and White. I think Rutgers and Kevin Banner would love to have is the bench come off the bench. The guys coming off the bench play well and play better so they can bring their numbers down to that 32 mark, if you will. Moss, West Virginia's missed their first three shots. Played almost three minutes of this first half. Pretty stagnant offense, though. Nobody moving with, with the short cuts, with any intensity, with direction. Armstead has to force Watch out. Rear the rebound. It's all on the perimeter for West Virginia. And on the road, Bob, you want to make sure you're going towards the basket a little bit more. West Virginia now 0 for 5 from the field. And they settle back into a matchup. 
man-to-man -man in his zone. So it's a combination man-to-man -man when someone's in the balls in your area, it's man-to-man. -man. When, when he leaves, it's his own. Now there's some confusion if they hurry. All right, shot clock under 10, down to 7. Rear for Kent, and the West Virginia native puts it in. That's what he's most effective. What they try to do for Kent is they try to lead him with the ball so that he catches and goes towards the basket. There's no thought process involved except be strong and go right at it. Terrific delivery. Rutgers by 7. And we have played four minutes of this first half, and West Virginia has yet to score. Marie. Good defense. Greer doesn't have numbers. Try to feed Jones and Scott with good hustle back. Yeah, it's a very good play by Scott, or they would have been down 9 nothing. Rutgers has raced out to a 7-zip lead. 15-53 to go in the first half. You're watching Big East Basketball. Jersey, the nation's best college basketball players are lighting up the courts in your own backyard. Bring a friend or bring the family and check out Rutgers, Ryder, Mammoth, and Seton Hall basketball. New Jersey's Division I basketball is right around the corner from your home. So get up, get out, and get into the game. Great seats are available, so call the ticket offices at Rutgers, Ryder, Mammoth, and Seton Hall for ticket information. Here's a list of this week's games. Hi, I'm Mick Mottinghoff, and this week on Scholastic Sports Weekly, we'll tell you about one of the top girls basketball teams in Central New Jersey. Now, there were upsets of plenty in a recent New Jersey hoop fest. We'll have the story for you. And also, this bowler is one of the best in the Garden State. See those stories and more Sunday night at 7 p.m. exclusively on CNA. It's our weekly look at the top athletes, coaches, and teams in Philadelphia and New Jersey. So join me for Scholastic Sports Weekly. Twenty years ago, America's cable companies decided, on their own, to provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of Congress as a public service at no cost to the taxpayer. C-SPAN would bring the House, the Senate, democracy as it happens into our homes and schools. For 20 years, C-SPAN, the cable industry's gift to America. Self-fine gets his defender away from the basket. And now watch the delivery. The delivery towards the baseline. It allows him not have to, to not have to put the ball on the floor. He understands where he is on the floor and he just lays it right in. That's a big kid you're looking at right there. Big, strong. And look at the numbers. 70% from the field. Second in the United States. It does not qualify though for the official NCAA stat because you need to make five field goals a game to qualify. No matter how you slice it, 71% is 71%. Billet left it a bit short. Might have been deflected by one of the Mountaineers who's checked out. Murray whips in the lane to a reach. Tough look, no good. And West Virginia now 0 for 6. Terry Murray has come on. Scott in traffic, taken by Hodgson. Better positioning on the floor just then, but no results. We go back to this matchup. Well, that is straight man to man. You can always tell with the man with the matchup if the man cuts through that you're guarding with the basketball. If he cuts through the floor and leaves his area, the defender will stay and look for the next man entering. Now you see Pierce step up. Now they switch back into this matchup. Two, three. We get a whistle with six on the shot clock as Jones let it fly. A foul as Kent went flying. Big fellas along the baseline. And that's a screen that's tough to get through. Jones finds Billet. Works baseline. Played over five minutes and seven zip Rutgers. Rear spots three. Oh, and halfway down. Murray fighting for it. Kent has it and calls a timeout. Good play, good heads-up play by Kent getting on the floor. Had a brief opportunity where he might have been able to kick that ball out, but he decides to go with the timeout. Keep in mind, he's been struggling this year with a hip pointer injury. 
which is a very, very painful injury. He's about 90% 90, 90 recovered from it. And the reason I bring that up is because playing with a hip pointer, it's very tough on the body, and it's difficult to hit the floor. And look at him go down there. And looking for opportunities on the floor to pick, it, pick up a, a possession for Rutgers. I like the way Hodgson kept it alive as well underneath. West Virginia 0 for 6 from the field. As a team on the season, they're shooting it at 43%. Rutgers at 46 and a half percent. Rashad Kent, a very active first five minutes and 24 seconds of this ball game. I may be uh, bad luck for the uh, visiting teams this weekend. We should take a look at Kevin Bannon. Best starts at 75 76. But the reason I say that with bad luck for the road teams, yesterday I was working the Villanova Georgetown game, which was a sensational game, won in double overtime by Villanova. Villanova went up 13 0 against Georgetown to begin that one. And Rutgers up 7-0 right now. So uh, tip your cap to Craig Eschrick and the job he has done at Georgetown since taking over. They just have to learn how to put away some people down the stretch because they have competed. Kent in traffic, that one knocked away. And Pierce comes out of the pack. And a little too hard for Scott. And West Virginia turns it over again. That is their third turnover of the ball game. And I'm not sure of the decision just then, too. When you're down 7 0 and you haven't gotten really, a, except for maybe one good look at the basket down low, come down the floor if you don't have numbers. Don't try to make a hard pass. Try to make something simple and basic. Earl Johnson with the ball in for Rutgers. Rear hammer. Look at the pass, though. But he won't be going to the line. Scott got his money's worth. And putting him on the line on that, it looked like he was he was looking away from the basket, pushing that ball back out to the wing. So Jeff Greer, the sophomore out of the Bronx, whose brother Ricardo is a member of the Pitt Panthers team, an 81.6% free throw shooter. Rutgers as a team, a very respectable 72% this year. You will win some close games. Especially when some of your starters are shooting at 80% and better. As with Jeff Billett, Jeff Greer, and Hodgson's a very good one just under. And shot can't call for a foul. Battling for rebound position. Saw Kevin Bannon just pleased with that. West Virginia has to get something going here, Bob. They need a bucket. And they're down 8 0. We've played over six minutes of this first half. Here's. That finally one. hits it. Getting better and better. Using his size that time. Off the dribble, then facing up. Good turnaround. Here's broke the heart of the Rutgers team back on December 30th with that shot with 1.6 seconds left. Austin hasn't really been involved much so far. Kent knocked away. Good help defense. So they're letting him catch with the man behind him. So they have two guys who are rotating on him. They're going to double team him. Bringing over a second player. Oliver in traffic finds Scott. Nice look by John Oliver, the freshman, and Elton Scott scores. And it's amazing once you get one shot to go down, how the pressure is removed and relieved a little bit. In West Virginia, the last two trips down look totally different. Good position by Hodgson down low, and he draws a foul. Use his body there, Jim. Yeah, that's what they're looking to do. Rutgers will look to post up. Hodgson can go inside and outside. Marcus Rory gets called for the foul. Kent will go out for Rutgers. Very enthusiastic first seven minutes for the freshman. Joel Salvi in for the Scarlet Knights. Salvi usually gives them good energy off the bench. Johnson to Greer. Nice pass. And Greer with a acrobatic finish. Absolutely. And that tiny bit of a hesitation before he shot the basketball to free himself. There's Salvi with some energy off the bench. Billet has some numbers. Nice. Oh, good look for Johnson. Tipped in by Salvi. Billet and Salvi leading that break. Beautiful pass by Billet. Salvi giving them the energy, and the fans react to it. Referred to as like a four-man Dennis Rodman Salvi. <laughs> Greer playing the passing lane. Billet's got it. Three on two. Oh. Tough shot oh. through the foul as Murray batted it away. He batted Billet away at the same time with a couple of bodies, but keeping the pressure on, Jeff Billet offensively had himself a nice angle. The defender never gets in front. See, his shoulders are ahead right now, and when you get your shoulders ahead with the basketball, good things will happen. Salvi, on the other hand, making things happen 
coming off the bench. Following this play up, you get a good play there defensively. And then follows it up with a tip. Armstead called for the last foul. Billet at 86% on the season. Put the whammy on him. Whammy on him and he walked away from the shot. You take one or two steps away from the free throw line before the ball hits the rim. You're in trouble because you're pulling it away. Greer goes out. He's been effective for Rutgers. And let's see if Jeff, Jeff Billet stays on the line for his entire shot right now. Rutgers with a 12-4 lead. Much better, 13 -4. Notice, Bob, how he did not move away from the line. He stayed on the line and finished his shot. Brooks Berry comes in, a sophomore from Roanoke, Virginia. How do I tell you about your golf game? you got to finish that shot when I give you tips on the court. Right. You're just a guy go to that. <laughs> Twice. Armstead. Three. Oh, with the arm. Fans want to travel, but it's a good call. West Virginia has to get active again. Got a two, two field goals in a row there where they were pretty active, but the balance of this eight-minute stretch, they have not been active at all offensively. Barry just gets it in. Here's Barry, guarded by Billy. Marie. Oh, a little too much. He had Armstead. But just a little too high for the 5 foot 11 Armstead. Sixth turnover for the Cat Squad. They trail it 13 4. Back to rack after this timeout. Did you know you can get a six cylinder Nissan Frontier for less than the cost of a four cylinder Tacoma? Think about it. That's like getting 170 horsepower but only paying for 150. Or like getting two and a half tons of towing capacity but only paying for a ton and three quarters. Amazing how they do that. The Nissan Frontier. Ranked best compact pickup in initial quality by J.D. Power and Associates. Caught in a sea of changing rates and offers, choosing the right calling plan can be a daunting task. Bell Atlantic is here to help. By first listening to your needs, then analyzing your calling patterns, Bell Atlantic will help you select a local and regional toll calling plan that best fits the way you call. For your home or your business, take it from someone who knows these waters. Wild things are happening. Bell Atlantic, we'll see you there. Work piling up. Let's go. That's the perfect time to declare a national holiday. Let's go. National Car Rentals declaring every day a national holiday. Let's go. With a great holiday rates, you can escape to the slopes. Let's go. Or the golf green. Let's or go. the tropical beaches. Let's go. So call National Car Rental now. Let's go. And declare your own national holiday. Let's what are you go. waiting for? Let's go. Rutgers with a 13-4 lead with 11.52 remaining in the first half. Bob Hoffa along with Jim Spinarco. Glad you can join us for Big East basketball. Rutgers vaulted out to a quick 8-zip lead. And take a look, West Virginia has struggled with just two of eight shooting in the ballgame. Six turnovers and Jim, when you don't turn it over, there's a good chance you'll have an on-point lead. Absolutely. And you look up and there's no shock on the scoreboard. Well, <laughs> there's turnover number one as Salvi can't get the ball inbounded to Earl Johnson. Kevin Banner along, you may see him in the background. There he is now. He thought there may have been a tip on that play. Trying to work constantly. Every coach in America working the officials early on. Maybe by a call here and there. Barry finally gets it in. Pierce with it for Armstead. Corey down low hot position on Salvi. Nice hesitation. Count it the foul. If he doesn't have that hesitation, the second guy in becomes a factor blocking the basketball. But the fact that Corey held on to that ball, you watch the positioning again. It gets Salvi behind him. Now Salvi's the first guy. Here comes the second guy, and he brings it away from Kent to be able to put that basketball in the basket. Watching back in. Kent picked up his second foul. He had some foul problems in the game at West Virginia. That's why his production was limited. He had four in that game and only four points. So Hodgson tipped it to Scott. So Goreen misses the free throw. But West Virginia has it down seven. Goreen double teams. 
Yeah. Draws a foul. Yeah, that second guy is a factor with Rutgers. But not very active, but more active West Virginia than they were in the first three or four minutes of this basketball game. They get better results going towards the basket. Bob Hodgson called for the foul. Dante Jones back in. This game has a little roll to it, does it? Yep. West Virginia has it down 7-0 to the start. And but the fans haven't really risen or risen yet for any kind of a commotion or getting the team up, trying to put them up 14 or whatever. And all of a sudden, West Virginia starts to sneak back into it, Bob. Freshman Moss hits two. It's a five-point game. You saw Alvitas Tenise come in to the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. And that is Hodgson with the basketball. Let's bring it up. This is where West Virginia, the first game, had a little success with some pressure. They extend a little bit. Gail Catlett known for changing his defense. And all of a sudden, it's got them playing a little bit more alert in the back defensive ranks, whereas Rutgers is trying to figure it all out. Johnson uses the screen. Jones for Johnson. Shot clock down at 10. Billet in traffic, and he's very smart play. Drew the foul there on Pierce. Well, he, he draws the foul coming around the top. So first of all, he, he came around the top and broke somebody down. Pierce off without it. Look the way he's running around now. Pierce is trying to go around that screen. And watch Jeff Billet jump to his left first. He jumps left first and then looks for the basket. And when you do that is when you do not have a clear shot and you don't think confidently you're going to put the ball in the basket. So you look for a body and feel somebody. Billet misses the first of two. Bill at 86% on the season has missed two free throws so far today. Now Rutgers, the rack here, is usually a very loud place. This is extremely quiet. I don't want to wake anybody up. It's early on Sunday. <laughs> Billet rattles in the second, six-point lead. Billet will take a seat with five points, and Jeff Greer comes back in for Rutgers. Armstead. Corey with the position. He's calling for the ball. Not a good pass. Still battles and keeps it. Gives for Moss. Nice little move by Moss. Can't get the fall though. We're going to get a foul from behind on Moss. That was a good set. Corey came after that basketball and really tracked it down. A nice two handed shovel pass through the lane. They don't get any results out of it. Watch Corey start looking for the ball. He wants it right there. You can even see him yelling and positioning himself. He goes after it. Good effort. Now Rutgers turns it over. Scott, a three. No good. And Johnson out of the pack. Has Jones. Johnson takes. Doesn't finish, but draws the foul. Good break there for Rutgers because they're running the floor. And defensively, it was kind of a two-on-two, -two, almost a two-on-two. -two. But don't take the pressure off if you have numbers or what appears to be an advantage. Because one of the things, Bob, when you're running a fast break, not only if you see the numbers, if you have a two-on-one or a three-on-two, that's a clearly in a numbers advantage. But when you have a guard handle on the basketball, pushing it down the floor, you have an advantage in itself because you have a guy backpedaling on you. Johnson rattles in the first free throw, 75% shooter. Second is good as well. And lead it back to eight. Javis Johnson comes in, a junior guard, replacing Lionel Armstead for the Mountaineers. Loree can't grab the pass, but now takes it and dunks it as Jones tried to throw it off and Corey with a little soft shoe. And now he showed the one, two, one, one trap. Looking for some hands on the basketball. Hodgson. Count it. Kill the foul. Yeah, Kears with the reach in. They had some problems at half court. The trap working okay, but then Rutgers recognizing. And here you see Gory going to work. Gets the ball thrown at him. Did not kick out of bounds. That's what the attempt was by the Rutgers player. And then you have Hobson. Hodgson going down the lane, getting hit first. And Moss a little late trying to reject that shot. And Kears calls for the body. That's his third foul. And he's going to have to come out of the ball game. Armstead back in with 10-12 remaining in the half. And Rutgers with a nine-point lead. 
Scott to Moss. Played by Kniet. And gets the ball on Stead. Johnson battled for it, and last touch Rutger. Nice work, too, by Johnson along the baseline just then. Slapping that basketball down to get it moving again. Sometimes one of the things you want to do is, as a player, if you can't retrieve it, keep it alive by smacking it somewhere where you want it to go. Marie over to Nice, and he hits it. Good square up, good composure with Denise, not putting the hand up. Got to play some defense with the hands in the face. Six for Gori. 19-12, Rutgers. I think the West Virginia pressure was bothering the Scarlet Knights a little bit. Well, one of the things it's doing is they'll switch up the defenses, Bob. So initially the trap and the, and the switch up out front will cause you to, to think twice as to what you're doing. But then they come back and they'll switch and settle back into a different defense. And sometimes they go from trap to man to man, sometimes from trap to zone. Greer couldn't get it to fall, but he tipped it back to Hodgson. Good hands by Johnson there. Scott got a hand on the basketball. Greer to three. Looks like a different Rutgers team now than they did the first five minutes of this game. <laughs> Scott tried to whip it down low to Moss, and Denise with the hustle back as Billet comes back in. One of the few times that West Virginia has tried to go down the floor, Billet back on the floor to help control what you just mentioned a moment ago. Help them to make Rutgers' decisions a little bit. That's a, that's a tough pass for Gouri to try to handle. Too much traffic. Rear. Nobody on Hodgson down low. Oh, what a move. Boy, was he camped out on that right baseline for a count of one or two. Got the basketball. The two West Virginia players tried to go after him, but he just slipped right through the middle. Nine-point lead. Offensive foul call against West Virginia's Javis Johnson. And all of a sudden, two little plays at both ends of the floor gets the fans into it a little bit more so. They've been very quiet. We've touched on that already. Denise held his ground. Jones to Greer. Here's Hodgson. Piece of cake. Yeah, they have it with Billet back on the floor. They're pushing, they're looking. Dante Jones also doing a good job of being a release. They finally got the fans really into it now with a little fast break action. And Hodgson, who has been struggling, giving them a lift. Single digit scoring four out of their last five games. So they really need Hodgson to step up. He's taking a belt. Which shot was worse, the one by his teammate or the West Virginia player? And then we'll watch Hodgson finish. He has nine to lead Rutgers. And, boy, you have to identify where he is on the floor, Jim. Oh, yeah, quickly you have to because he's running the floor pretty nicely now. Even that touch, that little touch shot to the basket, smart enough to avoid Moss's big swing with his right hand so he can tuck it away. You look at Rutgers in transition, and not only have they scored on the break, they've done a very good job of getting back. Bob Hodgson and Jeff Billett leading the charge. The senior leadership for Kevin Bannon's squad. Those two have combined for 14 of Rutgers' 23 points. Moss. Oh, what a play. Big fella moving around. By right, Denise. Scott lost it, last touch, Scott. Boy, 6'11", 235 pound Barishnikov. <laughs> Here he comes. Thank goodness you're not in that front row. You could avoid it then. They had the wall in front of them, though. They were Rear with it. Billy Collins in the ball game, a freshman out of New Hampshire, wears number 21 for Rutgers. Six foot seven. This is where the Rutgers need some bench minutes for Collins and other players like Denise take the pressure off the starters. Long three for Hodgson. Well, he's top to the Big East in three-point percentage. At 47%, he drains his first attempt today. Another turnover for West Virginia. There's Billick running the show. Great pass. Denise finishes. Rutgers 
Rutgers by 16. West Virginia looking around collectively like what happened just then. We were kind of making a run here. Moss, Collins the rebound. Greer. Collins. Oh, another great pass. Denise draws a foul, a hard foul from Berry, but a dunk and this place goes nuts. They are playing very solid fundamental basketball. And Gail Catlett has been going to his bench like a revolving door. He has three players ready to check in when they're allowed at the scorer's table. So he's looking for some answers that just has not been successful with different rotations. Denise on the season, nine of 19 from the line. In his last four games, made 11 of his 13 field goal attempts. That would lead me to believe that they're getting the ball to him in the right area. And here's a right area right here. Good fend off by Kenise to get position down low and the always court savvy Jeff Billet finding him down three or four feet from the basket, allowing the big guy to just turn and shoot. No dribbles allowed for big guys underneath. Rutgers on a nine zip run. Kenise hits one of two. Salvi will come back on for Rodgers. Jeff Billett and Rob Hobson leading the way. The Scarlet Knights in control. You're watching Big East basketball. Born, built for the way you live. Maggie's a born archaeologist. So when she was invited to see a recent discovery... Really? You bet I can get there. She couldn't wait to check it out in her new Ford Explorer. With its powerful V6 and control track four-wheel drive, Maggie was able to get in and out of some of the toughest terrain ever explored. I just love these out-of-the-way places. Here's a real find. Buy any Ford Explorer with one nine financing or lease a sport for just $2.99 a month. Ford Explorer. Built Ford tough. Built for the way you live. The one question I get asked most is, how do I do so many different sports on TV? College and high school baseball, men's and women's basketball, men's and women's soccer, and college football. How do I do play-by-play -play for all those different sports and not get them all mixed up? And I say, hey, it's no different than dribbling that ball 90 yards down the field and scoring a home run. Scott Graham calls the shots on CN8. <laughs> The thing I love about family talk is that it's so unpredictable. One moment we're talking to celebrities like Dionne Warwick or Dick Clark. Next, we're showing dramatic stories of families in real life crisis. At another time, we introduce you to Dr. Judy, who takes calls and gives you helpful advice about living. Next day, it's animals, clowns, and fun things to do. That's family talk. It's unpredictable, just like your own life. Mine too. Family talk, weekdays at 5.30 on CN8. Rutgers has made 10 of 19 field goals. They're at 53%. Their biggest lead of the ballgame with seven minutes left in the first half. Bob Popple along with Jim Spinarco. A lot of traffic in the middle of that Big East line of Jim. Absolutely. Filling up with that big win yesterday. Miami with a loss to Pitt, so they closed down. But take a look at the middle. We have five, six, seven, and eight. Rutgers, a big game for them this afternoon. And, and not only so much in the conference, because clearly you need to play well in the conference, but you need to get that overall number up to that 17 or 18, I would think, going into the Big East tournament. Rob Hodgson off to a very good start, 5 of 5 from the floor. Actually, this week, an interesting story with Hodgson, talking to the assistant coach of Rutgers, Danny Hurley, said they built a, a sequence of footage on the films for Hodgson where they put together four or five games previous to when he went into a little bit of a mini slump where he, every shot he made, he put, they put that into the film clip. So it was a highlight on Hodgson. He worked out, watched it about two or three times each day this week, and all of a sudden he comes out five for five. So the magic of power, positive thinking, and watching yourself perform well on tape. Here's Collins with a steal from Murray to the rack. Oh, didn't go, but a foul on Murray. Right in front of the student section. So Billy Collins, Mr. Basketball in the state of New Hampshire last year out of Bishop Brady with the steal and nearly the finish. And watch him get off the floor, too, with two hands. That's the thing that amazes me the most about college players now, how strong they are, how well they jump. Collins going up with two hands. This is the first free throw. He's three of seven now from the line this season. A little taller than what he appears. Also, Collins at the line. About six, seven or so. See Armstead coming back in for West Virginia. And the students enjoy the one of two made. 18-point lead for Rutgers. 
They jumped out to an 8-0 lead to start the game. West Virginia got it to within 5 at 13-8. Since then, it's been all Rutgers. Here. Armstead. Hodgson with the steal. A lot of traffic in there. You just can't randomly throw a bounce pass through that. What was a backhanded bounce pass also? Collins thought about the three. West Virginia has gone nearly four minutes without scoring. Greer, wide open. Salvi, Gorey with a rejection. Big time block by Gorey. Berry, Oliver. And West Virginia pulled back, reset. The first objective they have now with 5.40 or so left in this first half is to try to figure out a way to get this closer to 10. Gorey missed. But the follow, and I think Oliver was the one who batted it in. So that ends a four-minute drought for West Virginia. Greer, a little strong on the three. Last touch, Hodgson, it will be West Virginia basketball. Johnson and Jones back in for Rutgers. Out goes Collins and Greer. Those minutes coming off the bench. Collins giving him a good effort there for a couple of minutes. You know what he's getting ribbed about right there? That missed dunk. It wasn't a missed dunk it was because it was contested, but they're saying, DeVoy, you were up there with two hands. You would have brought the place down if you got that one to go. Here's gives for Scott. Scott has been quiet. At 24 in the last meeting. Maureen. Like a freight train. Oliver the follow again. So the freshman, John Oliver, from Long Island, able to connect. Somebody's got to find the body. Keep him off the glass. Earl Johnson, the junior. Is for Jones. Freshman. Hodgson. Made that long three earlier. Salve. Tough move. Boy, it sure was. I mean, he had great catching position. Then he had to use that big, long stride with the left foot to really put a foundation onto his body to go up over the defender. Oliver. Johnson knocked it away. Another turnover for West Virginia. Good luck. Jones. Dante Jones counted the foul. The delay break has been run very well for Rutgers. West Virginia got back a little bit quicker that trip. But the boys on the break. You see Johnson running the show. Little flip pass and then the fill down the lane for Dante Jones. And earlier on, we had Salvi on the blocks. Watch a big left step. See that left step? You have to get the strength underneath your body to be able to propel yourself into the air to get a quicker look. So Dante Jones, who turned 18 years of age in December, so he's a young freshman at the line, 10 and a half points per ball game. Had 20 against Lafayette. For rookie of the week, the week ending January the 24th, he completes the three-point play. And Jackie Rogers, a freshman, has come on for West Virginia out of Syracuse, New York. Take a look at the steals. Rutgers just turning over West Virginia at every turn. Scott, the defense by Johnson. Armstead, good by Billet. Waist high strip. To the crossover, Billet blocked, but he draws the foul. With 3.45 to go, Rutgers by 19. And Lionel Armstead with the turnover and then the foul. Watch the shot go right up in front of him. Great hands by Billet. Now watch him try to get his right shoulder ahead of Armstead. Just a tiny bit. Didn't quite get it in front of him, but got a pretty good angle, keeping Armstead going. And once again, Guard versus guard on the open floor. The offensive player has such an advantage. Billet with five points in the ball game. There's two free throws coming up here. Has missed two already today. Salvi should get a pretty good hand lead, don't you think? Yep. Salvi takes a seat, four points. Fans love him and. Alvides Tenis has come back on. He's played well for what? In fact, when you leave 36-16 with 3.45 to go in the half, everyone's played well. Just about, yeah, just about everybody's contributing. 
good comfort level. I think Rutgers does understand, and speaking to a couple of people uh, with Rutgers, they understand the importance of this game as we touched on with the standings a moment ago. 21-point lead for the Scarlet Knights in search of their sixth Big East win. Back to the rack after this timeout. Remember life in the fast lane? I do. First you meet, then you get married, and things slow down. Yeah, right. To help you keep up, drive the supercharged Regal GS Sports Sedan. Plenty of room, standard traction control, and the most power in its class. Hey, you haven't slowed down. Why should your car? Regal by Buick, official car of the supercharged family. Some fans watch football, but you see a different game with an insider's perspective when you read the new sporting news. Some fans watch basketball, but you see a different game and know who to watch when you read the sporting news. Some fans watch hockey, but you see a different game and know why that team is hot when you read the sporting news. And now you can read the sporting news free when you call now to claim your no-cost four-issue sporting news mini-subscription. Plus, reserve these great sports binoculars free. The Sporting News is now a full-color magazine, packed with the best, most in-depth sports coverage you'll find anywhere. You get all the teams, in season or out. Some fans watch baseball, but you'll see a different game and know what the manager's thinking when you read the Sporting News. Call now for your no-cost, four-issue Sporting News mini-subscription. If you like it, get 24 more issues, 28 in all, for four easy payments of just $5.99. Plus, get these great sports binoculars free with your paid subscription. Call now and see a different game. Well, the fans at Rutgers enjoying a 21-point edge with 345 remaining in the first half. Bob Popple along with Jim Spinarkle. Don't forget, coming up at the half, the National Car Rental Halftime Report will bring you the Big East Wire. We'll take a look at the young and veteran point guards in the Big East. Then we'll have some highlights and statistics for you as well. And we'll take one look back at that buzzer beater between Villanova and Georgetown yesterday. Some good games yesterday, that one. St. John's, Connecticut. St. John's having their problems with number one and number two earlier in the week with Duke. Armstead left it strong. Follow no good. And Hodgson the rebound. Rogers missed the tip. Two field goals in the last six plus minutes for West Virginia. Mike Jarvis has done such a great job at St. John's getting those guys to mesh together. Tough, difficult week, but they can compete with one and two. That's a confidence boost to Philip. And he draws the foul. That's what made the win at Syracuse so impressive off the Duke loss. Right. I mean, I was over at that game, Duke and St. John's at the Garden just as a fan, and I tell you, the Garden was rocking that afternoon. And it was just a flat-out terrific basketball game. Who are you rooting for? Pardon me? Who are you rooting for? I don't root anymore. Uh, Too old for that. Yeah, Jim was one of the people with his face painted blue and white. That's right. Cut out basketball over there. There he did. Denise misses the first of two. Armstead goes out. So does Rogers. Johnson back in. For West Virginia. Denise makes one of two. So he's made two or four free throws today. 22-point lead for Rutgers. West Virginia's going to try to battle their way back at the half here. Three minutes left. they got to get something going. Scott can't get it to fall. Jones the rebound. Knocked out of bounds by Johnson. Rutgers basketball. You have to give Rutgers credit. They've done a nice job of doubling on Gouri because that was working for them. Absolutely, and I, I, you have to give them credit for coming out and knowing the importance of this game as we get close to February where the importance steps up even more. Oh, Hodgson with a nice feed and a good catch by Denise. I think there's a big sigh of relief with the way Hodgson's playing. Denise catches the ball cleanly through the lane, but the way Hodgson's starting to get back in, he was in that little bit of a slump four out of the last five games, so starting to be a presence again. Denise has six. 20 to go in the half. 40 to 16 Rutgers. Bynan. Scott Goree. Knocked away by Kenny. Position basketball. Goree again. Oliver can't get it. Goree draws the foul. 
Rory a lot of credit for hustling. Alvita Tanis doing it on both ends. Yeah, Hodgson and Tanis working well together. Catches one off the belly a little bit there, but at least he's looking for the basketball. Now watch Hodgson pick up the first positioning. Whenever you see a second guy in blocking, it's generally because the first guy, Hodgson in that case, did his job correctly in stopping Goree's first look to the basket. Goree with six points to lead West Virginia. He drains the first free throw, a 76% free throw shooter. Get a look at Jeff Greer coming back in. Dante Jones will take a seat for Rutgers. Jones sits down with three. Marie makes both. He has been the sole source of offense for West Virginia. Looking for some full court pickup now. Man to man. Get the pressure up a little bit. Try to take a couple off the clock with the uh, scoreboard. 40 to 18. Ruck is really in control. 145 left in the half. Hodgson. Phillip. Johnson. Loses it last nicely. West Virginia just seems a little lost to me on defense right now. That was a major breakdown. Two guys went to the basketball. Moss. Foul right around the free throw line. Alvinas Tanis calls for the foul. And look at and Rutgers has just dominated the baseline. Well, look at two guys went to the basketball. They leave Johnson all alone down low. And actually, it was Moss just then was the first guy to get to him, but he looked away from the basketball wall. So three guys committed some problems and errors on that particular defensive set. Moss hits the front end of the one and one. Kerry Murray comes back in. Kearse goes out. He so had a very good game against Marshall. Did the freshman Moss, six foot eight, hits both. Nice pass by Johnson. His career. Hodgson wide open. Another three. He oh. hit three of them. He's got some bounce to him, too. He may be keen. Maybe coming out of that little mini slump. 45-20 Rutgers. 1-10 to go in the half. Vincent Display are their home floor right now. Rutgers in control. Oh, look at the big fella. Tenise with the steal. He's done everything. Give it back to a billet. Let him dribble it up the floor. The big guy after a strip. Although he'd probably be on the bench after that. That's right. Under a minute to go. Billy. Hodgson, another three. He's stroking it. Oh, he's, oh. How open is he, too? Who's guarding him? 18 for Hodgson. 48 20 Rutgers. Moss. Rear the rebound. Didn't keep his head up. Moss tipped it away. Johnson draws the foul on Greer. Looking for the knockout punch, if you will. Rutgers, the best thing that can happen to the West Virginia team and Gail Catlett is for the 22.9 seconds to disappear off the clock. Because Rob Hodgson is just leading a great flurry for Rutgers, stroking the basketball, his leadership presence on the floor. This team really looking to make things happen for him as a group, for him and Billet, who've been through the wars here at Rutgers for four years. For Billet. Tell you what, they've had a very good first half. Here's Hodson again. Oh, boy. Someone's got to cover him. He has 21 points. He has 21 of the 51. Nine seconds to go in the half. Rutgers riding West Virginia. He's playing that shooting game around the world. He's just finding spots. Nobody's out there with him. Moss with a dunk to end the first half. It will count, but it's the Rob Hodgson show. He has 21, and on Super Sunday, Rutgers has been super. Kevin Bannon's team with a 51-24 lead. Still to come, the halftime report. We'll bring you first half stats, highlights, and the Big East Wire. The Scarlet Knights in control. You're watching Big East Basketball. For Christina, her Cameron, or ZX2, go for a run, get Laura, find a subject, then hit the road. The term still life doesn't exist. 
Together they capture more in a day than most tourists do in a week. It's a good thing her Ford ZX2 has a powerful ZTEC engine to zip them all around town. Hey, focus on this. 1500 cash back or 750 cash and 09 finance. And we're not done yet. Ford ZX2, built to last, built for the way you live. You want to talk sports? How you doing, Bruce? Hey, how you doing, Bruce? Sports Talk with Bruce Beck, weeknights at 10 o'clock. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Sports Talk. Bruce has all the latest stats, scores, the facts, the rumors, his opinions, and yours. All of a sudden, I think you've got one of the five or six best players in the league. There's Plus, no he has lots of friends who drop by. And Luke on a second the same way, he is my best friend. You know, he took his road test on the dinosaur. It's Bruce Beck and Sports Talk, weeknights at 10 o'clock, only on CN8. Lifetime knows that true friendship is extraordinary. You're very different people leading very different lives. You certainly know an awful lot about mothering, considering you've never been one. You're probably more different than you are alike. Why do I get the feeling you're living vicariously through me? There's no real reason why this friendship should work. And yet, can you imagine your life without it? You coming back here has been the best thing that's happened to me in ten years. Lifetime's any day now. Two very different women, one extraordinary friendship. CNH, it's your call with Lynn Doyle talking about the issues you care about. Now tell me, Ann, where do you think the president goes from here? Talking to the experts. I think there should be more legal arguments than factual arguments in this case. If you're reading it in the paper or watching it on the news, CNH, it's your call with Lynn Doyle lets you talk about it on the air. This is about power. Who has it and who wants it? If you care about it, Lynn Doyle talks about it on It's Your Call weeknights on CNH, brought to you by First Union Bank. Hoops heaven on CN8. Now this is basketball. Three weeks ago, Seton Hall battled West Virginia in a game that saw bodies fly all over the court. The Pirates had four players in double figures and escaped with a victory on this drive by Yolanda Rouse. Don't miss a Big E showdown as the West Virginia Mountaineers seek revenge against the Seton Hall Pirates Sunday afternoon at 2.30. Hoops heaven on CN8. Feel the game. Man, that's heaven. It's time now for the National Car Rental Halftime Report, brought to you by National Car Rental. What are you waiting for? Let's go. Bob Papa, along with Jim Spinarco, back at the rack on the campus of Rutgers. We're at halftime. Rutgers playing host to the West Virginia Mountaineers. Well, Jim, it is time for our Big East Wire and number one UConn in action yesterday at Madison Square Garden, taking on the Red Storm of St. John's. And St. John's in the second half able to build up a big lead. Reggie Jesse had 14 points. You see him scoring on the inside right here, and then Ron Artest does so many things. He sure does. Came up with a big game shot against Duke earlier in the week. Here he comes up with a good steal, and they get down the floor again, looking for opportunities with Bootsy Thornton. Yeah, he hits the three. That gave St. John's a 10-point lead. Jake Boskell, though, with a slam inside, and then UConn goes to their big weapon. Exactly. Richard Hamilton, the ripper, rips one through from the top of the key. A big shot for them, but they know how to put people away. Now, you were at the Villanova-Georgetown game yesterday. Today. Let's take a look. To go to. Gave up his dribble quickly. Bella stand quickly to Howard Brown. It's on the way. It's good. Get ready for overtime number three. It'll be here in a moment, as stated earlier. Uh oh. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Villanova won. I don't believe it. Don Cricky and Jim Spinarco with the call. How about that shot by Jermaine? I never thought the way that game began yesterday, Bobby, with Nova going up 13 to nothing, you'd ever get to overtime, never mind doubles. Big win for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, and look at Miami. They get in the rankings, and then they lose to Pittsburgh. A shock for Leonard Hamilton, I'm sure, going on the road with Pitt, and then Syracuse going into Seton Hall last night, really commanding that game. All right, take a look. UConn at the top of the standings, but what a battle in the middle. Yeah, the jockeying is on for which team is going to emerge with the teams like Villanova, Rutgers, and Syracuse really looking to elevate themselves, trying to search for 18 wins. Seton Hall, as I mentioned, with that difficult loss last night to Syracuse has to regroup the troops. All right, that is the Big East Wire. We're at halftime here at Rutgers, West Virginia, and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights will take a timeout. When we come back, we'll take a look at point guards in the Big East. Look into the faces of West Virginia University. You'll see minds that are open to a world of big ideas. Minds that bring dreams of a future to come. And if you look even closer, you might catch a glimpse of what your future could be. What are you expecting? West Virginia University. Success. Expected. To rich 
Jewish people have more friends than the rest of us? Are they more deserving of a comfortable seat? Are they more entitled to break safely on a rainy day? Are we the only car company that doesn't think so? Century by Buick. Full of amenities for under 20,000. Loaded for under 24. Century by Buick. A luxury car for everyone. A lot of people think that cooking is throwing food together and eating it. But to me, cooking is like creating great art. You measure the ingredients in exact amounts. Kind of like a musician composing a symphony. <laughs> you mix the ingredients perfectly, like an artist mixing colors on a canvas. Then you add your passion. Cook it perfectly, and when you're through, you don't just have food, you have a work of art. Then you can eat it. Let's Cook. Weekdays at 5, brought to you by Hudson County Community College. Hi, I'm Mick Mottinghoff, and this week on Scholastic Sports Weekly, we'll tell you about one of the top girls basketball teams in Central New Jersey. Now, there were upsets of plenty in a recent New Jersey hoop fest. We'll have the story for you. And also, this bowler is one of the best in the Garden State. See those stories and more Sunday night at 7 p.m. exclusively on CNA. It's our weekly look at the top athletes, coaches, and teams in Philadelphia and New Jersey. So join me for Scholastic Sports Weekly. Yeah, you're drawing this, you're not doing it. Well, dry watch. Oh, who's this person at movie night? Thank you for joining us. You know what? Stop kicking me. Dad, shut up. It's on. May I have some popcorn, please? Oh, yes, you may. Thank you very much. The movie was going to be fun. See? She told you the movie was going to be fun. Yeah, Dad. She told you you would like it. I'm going to listen. Why don't I listen? Welcome back to Rutgers in New Jersey. We're at halftime. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights playing host to the West Virginia Mountaineers. Point guards are the subject of our Bell Atlantic Big East Conference call. When you're looking for talented young point guards around the country, the Big East has a few worth mentioning. Ranging from size to speed, the Big East is loaded. We ask Villanova senior point guard John Celestan, one of the league's best regardless of class, about a few of his younger adversaries. Shaheen, uh, it's funny because me and him go way back to high school. Uh, Holloway is, uh, he's quick, like a little jitterbug. He changed direction so quick. And that's, that's the most important, that's the hardest thing to cover him is that he can just switch directions so he's so low to the ground at, at the top of his nine, you know, he's lightning quick. He's pretty much the same. He, he, he's lightning quick, a little better shooter. He, he, he shoots strong of a body, you know, so he, he's lightning quick also. He's, I think those two are, two are top point guards, not just in, in our league, but in the country. Jason Hart's a little different because he, he's quick, but he's taller. So, you know, you have to watch him on, on, on the boards as well. He gives me a little more trouble on defense. With Holloway, and I mean, they're, they're smaller, so I, it's, it's easy for me to shoot over him sometimes. But with Hart, it's harder because his size puts a lot of pressure on him in his long arms. The list does not end there. A pair of freshmen have made their presence felt in the league. St. John's Eric Barkley has been that missing piece to a Red Storm puzzle, while Kevin Braswell of Georgetown is one of the top scorers for the Young Hoyas. Lost in the shuffle is West Virginia sophomore Jared Kears. You haven't heard much about him, but when you have a league this deep in a given position, that's what happens. We're at halftime. West Virginia and Rutgers will take a quick time out when we come back. First half stats after these messages. When do you first realize it? Is there a defining moment? A clear turning point? Some kind of sign? Do you choose it? Or does it choose you? When do you know you're an athlete? When you win your first trophy? Or break a record? Or is it when the thought of losing keeps you awake at night? When do you know you're an athlete? When you can't stop playing. We've got some great sports teams around here, and one of the hottest is the sports team from CN8. CN8. 
Diamonds in the Rough with Barry Farber. Find out the secret to success and happiness with today's leading entrepreneurs. If you love sports, don't miss the next Diamonds in the Rough. ESPN founder Bill Rasmussen joins me to talk about following his dream and achieving the impossible. And we'll have ESPN's first minutes on air. Join us. That's Tuesday on Diamonds in the Rough at 11 o'clock. Brought to you by Custom Home Dry Cleaning Kit and Valpac. Stay tuned to receive your free trial version of America's number one accounting software for small business. Okay, folks, here's your business card, letterhead, and my invoice. How did you create this invoice? With QuickBooks accounting software, I called the toll-free number and got a free trial version. Wish I had time to learn new software. It takes no time. Answer a few simple questions, and QuickBooks tailors itself to your business automatically. And if you can write a check, you can use QuickBooks. QuickBooks makes it easy to see who owes you money and how much you owe. It also does invoicing, payroll, and inventory. Plus, you get customizable reports and graphs that puts you in control of your business. To try QuickBooks free, call 1-800-650-5608 for your free trial version. Or, if you also need time tracking, estimating, and project costing, then try QuickBooks Pro. Either trial is yours free for calling 1-800-650-5608. Bob Papa along with Jim Spinarco back at Rutgers at the half. The Scarlet Knights pounding West Virginia 51 to 24. Let's take a look at some first half highlights. And they start and begin with Rob Hodgson. Yes, they do. A terrific first half doing everything well offensively. Eight for eight from the floor. Drop down four for four from the, behind the arc. And look at him step back now, straighten himself up and ripped away. He also did it at the defensive end too, though. Bobby was playing good, solid defense along with his Rutgers teammates. Here you see him use the feet, move around a little bit. Triggers one of his two steals in the half. I guess when you go eight for eight, you can say it's a perfect half for him. Let's take a look at the Buick first half statistics. And you take a look at the field goals and the three-point shooting. Rutgers at five of ten. Fast break points, 23 zip. And the turnover, 16 to four. When you, when you look at those, the, obviously the scoreboard at 51-24 comes into play. But just look at the fast break opportunities for Rutgers, 23 to zero. And obviously that number right below it, 16 turnovers. This isn't going to cut it. Rob Hodgson and company doing a very nice job all over the floor today. Hodgson just won off his career high. He has 21 at the half. We'll be back to the rack with seven and a half action after this time out. Travelers know that when it Let's comes go. to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. go. National Car Rental. Especially if you're going to Disneyland's go. new Tomorrowland. Because as the official Let's car go. rental company of the Magic Kingdom, National gets you in your car and on the road. For a family vacation you'll never forget. So what are you waiting for? Let's go to Disneyland's new Tomorrowland with National Car Rental. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 16. Larry, our battery expert. Larry installs more Autocraft batteries in a day than most people do in a lifetime. No matter what you drive, Larry will make sure you get the right battery for your car. 92 Accord? Yeah. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. You look terrible. <laughs> Late night last night? Not like you think. Sinus pain. It kept me up all night. Can I see? Oh, that gel mask thing? Why don't you just take sinus medicine? I guess at night I need something different. Introducing Tylenol Sinus Nighttime, formulated to relieve your worst sinus pain and pressure so you can sleep. Morning. Well, look who's feeling better. Found something new for my sinus pain. Got a great night's sleep, and now I'm ready for anything. Good. Then you can get the coffee. <laughs> New Tylenol Sinus Nighttime. It's all the relief you need. 
Did you know you can get a six-cylinder Nissan Frontier for less than the cost of a four-cylinder Tacoma? Think about it. A former star at Rutgers, Alexei Lalas, on hand to sing the national anthem. into the Rutgers Olympic Hall of Fame at halftime here at the Rack. Well, Rob Hodgson with 21 points at the half, one off his career high. He now has 1,134 career points. That's 23rd all-time. Jones misses the dunk. He passed the late Jim Valvano with those 21 points in the first half today. An interesting way that Rutgers just came out. Also, Bobby just been with an opportunity to go for a lob dunk to get things started to pick the crowd up. Kevin Bannon, pretty good, pretty good choice to set plays just then. Did not go down, but very nearly went down. Shot clock down to eight. Greer's got to go. Oh, nice move by Greer for Hodgson. And he hits. He's nine for nine. A new career high. He has 23. been sensational the whole trip. Tough look for Pierce. Jones, the weak side rebound. Jones a little out of control. Pierce with it the other way. Well, they desperately need a shot or two to go down in the first couple of minutes here of the first second half. Marie got it in the foul. He's the only offense so far for West Virginia. He now has 10 points in the ball game. Good solid body on him too. Six 6'8", 230 or so. And watch him use the body and the blocks. Keep in mind, Kent is not a small guy either, but he's banging and bouncing a little bit. And the one thing I like about Corey is once he decides he's going to shoot, he puts the whole body in action, squares up nicely, touches it off the glass. Jones picked up his third foul for Rutgers. A 53-27 lead for the Scarlet Knights. Start the second half. The they do not appear to be in much of a hurry. To start this second half off. Just run the clock down as much as possible with this big lead. You wonder whether West Virginia has up as a step as the firepower to get back into this game. Freshman Jones called for the travel. So West Virginia with the basketball. They fell behind 8-0 to start the game. Got it to within 5 at 13-8, and then Rutgers just took over. Scott has been very quiet. So what they need to do, Bob, is get a couple of buckets together and force Kevin Bannon to call a timeout. And if they keep throwing shots up and just not going down, they'll never do that. But if they can get two or three in a row, change the complexion and momentum a tiny bit. They are just struggling for good luck. Agouri kept it alive and gives West Virginia another possession. Moss started by Ken. They want to get it to Agouri as much as possible. They're double teaming. You see Kent running as the five guy now to run again. That's a tough shot. Agouri and Kent got it quickly to fill it. To slow it down, one on three. Greer, Kent draws the foul. Just like we saw in the first half when Kent had some opportunities. Offensively, also helping out. See, Goree catches it. Now look at the double team. They recognize Goree's ability on the block. Kent rolls defensively to help out Hodgson. And then Kent with the quick kick on the outbreak. Moss picks up his second foul. Kent at the line to shoot two. Nice touch for the big man. 
first trip to the line this afternoon. Kent on the season at 42% from the line. Takes his time, huh? Sure does. From Fairmont, West Virginia, about a 15-minute ride from the campus of West Virginia. At a 6'6", 265, neither one of us are going to say anything to him to hurry up. No. Take your time, big fella. Scott Goree with the finish. Going towards the basket, too. He has 13 of the 29 West Virginia points. Now West Virginia, five on the floor right now. Really don't have what appears to be a real strong energy level. Defensively, in particular. And Rutgers just kind of running their set. Pass intended for Kent. Now they say last touch Rutgers, it will be West Virginia basketball. Earl Johnson in. Dante Jones will take a seat. Sits down with three points. Moss, guarded by Kent. Yeah, with a lot of size, and he throws it away. See, it's a good opportunity there, a good thought, I should say, for Moss, because he has Kent all the way out on the floor to think Corey on the block, and that's what he started to think, but threw it to one of the cheerleaders, or Gail Catlett's trying to figure this out. 17 turnovers for the Mountaineers. Greer looking for Hodgson, and foul down below, a holding foul on Corey. The second foul. Second team foul. And as most players do, they question the call a little bit there. Gorey thought he was held. Lobs to Greer, but Kent cleans it up. A little West Virginia home cook there, huh? First team all state from West Virginia last season. You can see why Kent shoots it at 71%. Here. Tough look. And a nice drift, too, away from Hodgson, who was trying to pick up an offensive foul that trip. Kears, who had the game winner against Rutgers on December the 30th, has four points today. Johnson finds Billet. Back for Johnson. Goree cut him off. Rear. Good look off last count and the foul. See when Greer is doing that, when he's getting himself into the lane and shooting the basketball well, this is also a different team. A nice little skip pass across by Billet. That gets the defense rotating and rotating a little bit on the on the late side. And a nice quick pull-up jumper. Well, Rutgers isn't doing many things wrong this afternoon. Greer cleans it up, completes the three-point play, and Rutgers with a 29-point lead at the rack. You're watching Big East Basketball. And another will be coming. Todd Billett, right in the middle there. Got a chance to watch him a little bit on highlights. There were a couple of features done on him and Jeff this week, and it's a nice little pull-up jumper. Looking forward to coming to Rutgers, and Billett's for eighth season. Playing at Christian Brothers Academy in New Jersey. And there is older brother Jeff, a fantastic career at Rutgers, averaging 13 points a ball game. I guess they wish they could play together. Be nice. Yeah, he, made, he did mention that in the feature that I happened to see. It would have been nice, but there's part of it also where one's coming and one's going adds something other than that. Whoa. How about Kent? How about the railing over there? Man. They didn't kill anybody on the West Virginia bench, which is amazing. Fans love the activity, too, and the hustle. Let's see if the bench clears out. Ooh. 65 <laughs> over the bench. Moss for Johnson. Moss will let it go. Too strong. Pierce kept it alive, but Kent's got it. 29-point lead matches the largest of the afternoon for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Bill will take his time. He has seven this afternoon. Johnson. Hodgson made all nine of his shots today. Four or four from downtown. Billet. Johnson is three. 
Moss tipped it to Pierce. They have to continue to push. Here they go. Let's see if they can get something out of it. Long three for Pierce. Count it. Not a bad little run. Good job by Pierce, both getting it up and also following his pass down the floor. Don't watch it. Follow it so you can get in shooting range. Oh, Philadelphia native shoots the three at 40%. Greer. See, well, they're back in this what appears to be like a matchup zone almost, Bob. For the look of a 2-3. Rutgers can just take a lot of time off the clock. So the clock becomes your enemy right now if you're West Virginia more than anything else. Trying to get the ball to Kent. Scott knocked it out. Rutgers will have it with 12 on the shot clock. Dale Catlett, you saw the head coach of West Virginia. Inbound pass knocked away by Scott. He's only had one losing season with the Mountain. Johnson to Goree, tipped away. Moss can't get it. Mad scramble. And a jump ball call. Possession arrow in favor of West Virginia. Yeah, you're talking about Gail Catlin a moment ago, Bob. He's been nothing short of brilliant, though, at West Virginia over the years. Just a terrific job with his program. Keep in mind, they had a, a very good team last year. So a lot of guys left his team last year. So new faces, rebuilding a tiny bit. Made it to the Sweet 16. Yeah, they had a nice team. They really could take advantage of all his tricks defensively. You know, all the different defenses, the full courts, the variations that he put on them. This team, not as much because they're still young. Kears uses the glass. Hit five in a row. Five points in a row. And it's 60 to 36. Rutgers. Fans showing a little concern. Up 24. Huh? Greer, nice little first step. Oh, good body control. Kent can't get it to fall. Gorey cleans it up. A little more excitement defensively, too, for West Virginia as a group. A little better rotation. Pierce letting it fly again. One-handed rebound by Kent. And he uses that frame to clear everybody out. Well, he takes up a lot of room in there when he decides to make himself nice and wide. See if they give Hodgson a touch. He said his only field goal attempt here in the second half. Nine of nine in the game. Career high 23. There he is, wide open. Scott closed in. Kent. Good decision there by Kent to give it up also. Billet threw it right off the chest of Moss. Here's Scott. Hodgson races back. Scott lost it. And they'll call a foul. Not a particularly satisfying call for Hodgson and the student body behind the basket. But a little bit of a reach in on the break. I guess the fans are upset because Donnie Gray, the one official, was right there, didn't call it. Right. But Ed Corbett did. Berry's checked on for West Virginia. Kearse with it. Scott, too strong. Moss the rebound. Draws the foul on Ken. I like the way Moss grabbed that basketball and decided instead of putting it really down on the floor, just try to make something happen, go right after it. Earl Johnson called for his first foul. So Kent does not pick up the foul. They call it on Johnson. And that'll put Moss at the free throw line. The six foot eight freshman out of Chester, Virginia. 61% shooter. Misses the first. Take a look at some other scores in the top 25. Penn State, 10-point lead in the first half against Indiana. Maryland down a little, huh? Number four in the country. They have a date with Duke this week. I believe it's Wednesday night. Shad Kent takes a seat. Very active this afternoon. Moss hits the second. Oliver in. Moss out for West Virginia. 12-34 remaining in the ballgame. Rutgers with a 60 to 37 lead on West Virginia. West Virginia scored the last six. Hodgson wide open. The five for five from three-point range. Makes it 10 for 10, huh? On the afternoon. 10 for 10. He has 26. 22nd timeout, West Virginia. It's the Rob Hodgson show. A career high. 26 points in the ball game, 10 of 10 from the floor, 5 
for five from three-point range. Jim doesn't get much better than that. No, it does not. Keep in mind also, he has been struggling as we touched on in the first half a little bit. But worth repeating, I think, again, as, as I mentioned in the first half, they built a highlight film of him, and he spent some time watching himself on film, shooting the basketball, doing only good things to get his head cleared. He's the son of a... A coach who sometimes you have a tendency to overthink things when you're that into basketball. He's a real smart kid. He understands the game very well, but sometimes you can outthink yourself and you can outthink your performance. Obviously, the highlight films have worked pretty well because he put the, put together a highlight film this afternoon so far. You know, other than a few baseline drives, and he had that one twisting one in the first half, he's not forcing it either. No, and, and generally you see guys with big explosions in the first half who really have to work to get their points. And he having 21, you would think he might be tired, but there weren't a real tired type of points that he had to work for. He was just stroking the outside shot. And Bynum threw it away, intended for Barry. Bynum will come out. Gorey comes back in. And Salvi is in for Rutgers. Hodgson remains in the ball game. Alley you Jones with the finish. Got a little screen and took it to the rack here at the rack. Pierce a three. He answers back, so Pierce heating up a bit. Stroking him a little bit better. He has 12. Averages 13 a game. Pierce and Gouri have been the offense. Johnson, he answers with a three. This is just going so well for Rutgers. The West Virginia bench looks a little demoralized over there. They probably should be down 28. Gouri uses the glass. Trip to New Jersey for West Virginia. 11-14 to go in the ball game. Tougher trip home, Bob. 68-42. Yeah. <laughs> Rutgers. Billet for Jones. Guarded by Scott. Johnson. Salvin. Johnson, another three. He got it. Johnson came into the game making just three of 13 threes on the season. He's hit two. And when he gives him a lift off the bench, an experienced player, it just takes so much more pressure off Hodson and, and Billet. Barry, cut off by Billet, lost it. The 29-point lead matches the largest of the afternoon for Rutgers. Billet wide open. A little strong. Barry the rebound. Relief there from the fans. The building might have come down if that one went down. Also, everybody taking threes. Oliver counted and a foul on Salvi. Actually, John Oliver came off the bench in the first half and gave them some nice minutes. Hit both of his buckets. Ended up with four points and three rebounds. And here he gets pretty good position down deep. Good entry pass. Strongly to the basket to finish. Jeff Billet heads to the Rutgers bench. And Billy Collins has come on. Oliver with six points. Make it seven. Three rebounds. And we get a timeout on the floor midway through this second half. Jeff Billet and Rutgers dominating West Virginia. website at www.bigeast.org. Scores from all the Big East games are updated in progress. For box scores posted immediately after games. For knowledgeable Big East fans, there's no place better than www.bigeast.org. Well, this Rutgers program under Kevin Bannon doing a fine job, and there he is, Robert Mulcahy, the athletic director at Rutgers, been on the job for about a year, really turning the whole atmosphere of this school around. Absolutely doing a wonderful job here, both with the football program and basketball, and a great understanding of the state of New Jersey. Of course, he ran the Sports and Exposition Authority for many years, on the Giant Stadium and the Meadowlands Arena and Racetrack. Rutgers turns it over. So West Virginia with the ball. 9.43 left in the game. Gorey on the feed from Pierce. His bodies fly and count it for Marcus Gorey. 
Bodies were flying. You're right, Bob. I mean, it was a drive through the hoop that to the hoop that caused, caused everything. Marie with 17 in the game to lead West Virginia. Johnson for Salvi. He threw the foul on Oliver. Hit on the elbow. Yes, he was. Oliver putting the hand up, which you're supposed to do, but you're supposed to keep it away from the shooter's elbow. Kind of nicked it just a little bit. Energy off the bench with Salvi going to the free throw line. Salvi on the season, an 87% free throw shooter. He's made 26 of his 30 attempts. Rutgers 13 and 6 on the season, 5 and 4 biggies play. Guarded optimism by Kevin Bannon. Not really looking too far forward as far as preseason, postseason is concerned. Well, I don't think you want to talk too much about it because sometimes you put the pressure on the kids and they don't respond to it. You can't anticipate how they're going to respond, but they clearly have some big games coming up against Villanova next on the schedule in Providence. So here at the rack, what they're going to do, Bob, is they're going to. So some of the, the games are not shown on the local cable systems. They're going to have it played here on a big screen in the rack, and they're hoping it's something new, but they're hoping to generate a little excitement. Maybe some of the students will come over and watch those games. Dobley takes a seat. Kent in for Ree. Left and short. Watson the rebound. Johnson with it. Rutgers comfortably in front. Just under nine to go. 73-47. And then at 51 24 at the half. Collins with a three. He's now two of eight from downtown this season. In the first game, they nailed 14 threes. And boy, they've been ripping away again against West Virginia, just having all sorts of problems contending on the perimeter. Hodgson has five threes in the game, a foul call. Johnson has a couple. Shot Kent picks up the foul, his third. Virginia with nine threes in total, Bob. Not quite 14, but they're getting close. So they'll unbound it. Murray to trigger it in. He'll flip it all the way into the backcourt. You know your offensive set it did not work, but that's the best pass you can yeah, get out of it. Murray harassed by Jones. Tough shot by Moss. Murray kept it alive. Collins clears it out. Johnson with it in the front court. All the way in, and he draws the foul. Like the parting of the Red Sea for Earl Johnson. Foul will go on Kerry Murray. Get a seam open, as you mentioned. Of course, Kent makes himself nice and big, but then at the very last moment, Murray comes in. Watch Kent, left of your screen, number 44. Boy, he takes some people with him. Well, Hodgson slashing through, draws a foul. Goree called for the hold. Such a smooth afternoon for Rob Hodgson. For young kids watching, if you want to see, obviously, a 10 for 10 from the field today, a guy who shoots the basketball well from the line. And the number one reason he does is because there's limited motion in his free throw. Same type every time. Watch, cut the dribble. Bang. A perfect four. He has a career high 28 points. And on this Super Sunday, Rob Hodgson has been super. 10 of 10 from the field. 5 of 5 from three-point range. And a career high in points. And gets off his little mini slump, which I think is even more important for Rutgers, especially with Villanova and Providence coming up to have him playing well. Here's a three. Salvi the rebound. Rutgers with their largest lead of the game, 31 points. Collins is drained at three. Salvi wide open. Shot at 17 feet. The ball hit the end line. Give Kevin Bannon a chance too to get some guys off the bench, get them the additional minutes. It takes some time away from the starters, which is always good. 
Masalvi came up short there, but Rutgers coming up big. They lead it by 31. You're watching Big East Basketball. Taking on West Virginia. Let's take a look at our best play of the game brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people, and who else? But Rob Hodgson shooting the basketball 10 for 10. A perfect afternoon from the floor, shooting the ball very well from long range. The confidence back. Career high, 28 points. He's moved up two places today on the Rutgers all-time scoring list. He has 1,400 points as Goree can't get it to fall. Past Jim Valvano. And now moved into 22nd place on the all-time list. A very productive day for Rob Hodgson. Brian Samuels is in the ballgame, wearing number 30 for the Scarlet Knights. Gives it off for Jones, guarded by Murray. Dante Jones, and Moss clears the rebound. Murray, with that jumper. With that back rim all day for West Virginia. Pierce uses the net instead. Pierce been showing a little bit on the outside, now taking it towards the basket a little better. He has 14 in the ball game. 78-49 in favor of Rutgers. They've led throughout. Jumped out to an eight-zip lead to start it. Samuel for Salvo. Probably not even looking for that shot. Collins knocked away from behind by Pierce. Hard foul by Pierce. That's his fourth. A little frustration also for Kyrus. They're getting whacked as badly as West Virginia is. It's just embarrassing to some extent. Have to regroup and get ready for your next one. But a not an easy pill to swallow here at Rutgers this afternoon. You know, we talked about Rutgers and how Kevin Bannon just realized the importance of this game. You get a look at Jeff Billett needing that 14th win, get that sixth win in conference, and not really focusing on postseason. He was 14 and 15 last year. Rutgers has not been in the postseason since the 92 NIT. Collins misses the second. They haven't been in the NCAA tournament since 1991. They lost a three-point game to Arizona State. So guarded optimism that this win will help them take another step as Salvi's call for the foul down low. So they keep looking for Goree down low. Let's take a look at some of the 8-10 tournament championship banners they had. You know, that loss against Arizona State was a three-point game in Atlanta, Georgia in 92. They beat James Madison in the first round of the NIT, then lost here at the rack to Manhattan, 62-61. Now they're bringing Hodgson back in. 10 of 10 from the field, 5 of 5 from three-point range, career high 28 points coming back in. You get a travel called on Goreen. And I guess you start to think why, right? Why yeah. bring him back in? You lead it by 29, 5.59 to go in the ball game. He's had a perfect day. Not the, I wouldn't shoot right now if I were him. No, unless it's a layup. Keep the perfect, keep the perfect score and attack. Yes, just for some veteran leadership. A lot of young players on the floor right now with Kent, Collins, Greer, Samuels, junior college player. by Hodgson. He turns it over. Pierce up court. Goree powers it in. Goree and Pierce really been the two shining players for West Virginia on this dismal afternoon for them. Goree has 19 in the ball game. Whoa, be careful. Samuels, they're saying hockey lost his edge. Is that what they say in hockey? They said, yeah. But it was slipped on the ice. Off their edge. <laughs> Some big skater. I'll skate a little bit when I go home this afternoon for that Super Bowl. Approaching five minutes left in the ball game. Walks. Can't get it to fall. Collins the rebound. Samuels will skate up court. Very nice. 
action. And 10 of 10 from the field. 5 of 5 from downtown. Look at Casper. Missed him. Had him once. Lost him a second time. Angles has it back. Kevin Bannon's going to call a timeout. 20 second timeout. A little intensity there, huh? You look up at the scoreboard, you're up 78 to 51. He sees a pass opening that, that Kent was wide open, doesn't like it. He says, forget about the score, guys. We want to play this thing as if it's a 0-0 score. That's why I have you on the floor. You want playing time? You have to execute, work, play with intensity, and make the right pass. Well, he was talking to Brian Samuels and Jeff Greer in particular. Trying to complain with hot. Yeah, that's, well, that's just the message, and I like that. You know, you're up a bunch of points, and this game is, you know, clearly decided, but he's not letting up. So Samuel takes the inbound with 4.35 left in regulation. And all Rutgers. Thought about the three. And they're looking for Kent again, too. Rear from way downtown with a shot clock at four. Corey the rebound. Scott. Corey. Nice little look. And Armstead lays it in. Toronto Armstead, the freshman, able to pop it in. His first bucket today. One of the few times also they've had a good, solid, fast break where they've run the floor, had the wings filled. Just Holland. Kent on the foul. Foul call. Jeff Phillips getting a much deserved rest. First to be the first one number 33, Jared Pearson. Seen a lot, he and Rob Hodgson, in their four years here at Rutgers in this program. In the right direction. And to Kevin Ben. Pierce will go out. Fouled out with 14 points. Two rebounds. Didn't get hot until late. Rashad Kent goes to the line where he will shoot two. Pierce is a good young player though for Gail Catlett. Just a sophomore out of Philadelphia. Tom Gratz High School. Six foot five frame on him too, which is going to help him over the next couple of years. And he ends up using that pretty nicely too on occasion with his back ends. Off the dribble shot. Kent misses the front end. Greer puts it back in. Doesn't that sum up how the afternoon has gone for West Virginia? Sure has. Greer with eight in the ball game. Johnson for Armstead. How about Scott? He has just two points in the ball game. He had 24 in the first meeting. Rutgers has shut him down. Yeah, he and Gorey combined, and Gorey has done his part today with 42 in that first game. Good backdoor cut. And a blocking foul call on Hodgson. A little late getting over. Third foul on Hodgson. Alvitas Tenise will come in. He played very well in the first half. Kent will go out. Kent sits down with six points. Greer will go out with eight. As the walk-on, Connor Fox, out of Pope John in Sparta, New Jersey, comes into the ball game for Rutgers. And I would think that Kevin Bannon is going to build this up a little bit and remove Rob Hodson in a timely fashion so the fans can reward him. Now, if you're Hodgson, do you want to shoot again? I don't. Take the 10 for 10. How many games are you going to go 10 for 10? You, know, you may not know he's 10 for 10, though, either. Samuels lost it. Collins picks it up. Samuels will fire the long two and hit it. Everything working for Rutgers. 29-point lead for Rutgers, 2.53 to go. They've led by as many as 31. But by 27 at the half. Armstead drains the three. So the freshman, Lionel Armstead, hits the three. Out of Toledo, Ohio. Keep your young guys on the floor like this. Anytime you can get the minutes for West Virginia. Here's five. They wanted that to go down. Collins. Hodgson, he'll shoot it. Got it! Six 
for six from three-point range. What an afternoon. Career high, 31 points, 11 of 11 from the floor, and he's coming out at the next whistle. No question about it. Salvi is up off the bench. And they're going to let him hear it, too. Moss, hot to the rebound. will leave the ball game. We think, I would think, Salvi's waiting to come in. Collins will shoot one free throw as Hodgson goes to the line. What an afternoon. Look at those numbers, right? For the senior from New York. First free throw is no good by Collins, and now the ovation. Salvi in, and there goes Rob Hodgson. And, and my guess is we had Billet out of this game earlier, a senior. Put Hodgson in to give him an opportunity to get his due, I think. So psychologically, it helps him also. Smart coaching right there. Kid who struggled the last five or so. Well, the story you told about watching the video, it's just, it's just tremendous. Be, how he applied it. He'll be running to get this video. <laughs> this is one I'd keep in the old... Uh, Top draws at home forever. Show the grandkids this afternoon. Maybe I had some influence on him too. I was talking to him before the game. Maybe. Not about shooting, though. I wish I could say it was about shooting. Moss hits the front end, the one and one. Well, Rutgers off to their best start since they last appeared in the NCAA tournament, the 1990-91 season. That year they went 19 and 11. Second free throw, no good. Denise with the rebound. And Rutgers just dominating West Virginia all afternoon. 85-57, Rutgers in front, 125 to go. Salvi takes the jumper, hits his own rebound. We're going to whistle. A little push underneath. And foul will go on Javis Johnson of West Virginia. What the fans that are left now, Bob, really want to see, though, is Connor Fox, number 15 for Rutgers, get a shot off. And more importantly, they'd like to see him put one in. If he had the one look, the place would have gone crazy. He's now 0 for 3 from the field this season. Denise hits the three. He didn't get a lot of playing time in the second half, did Denise, but he played well in the first half. Yeah, I, I think you could say the whole entire bench really supported Kevin Bannon's effort for the starters this afternoon. And the West Virginia team, you know, Bob, it's one of those things. It's just one of his afternoons for West Virginia. Just forget about it. it. Happens to everybody. Rob Hodgson with an exclamation point. 11 of 11 from the field. Six of six from downtown. A career high. 31 to lead Rutgers. Like all BMWs, the 5 Series comes standard with all-season traction. And with available dynamic stability control, you'll have maximum stability on curves. Can we go again, Mom? Can we? Sure, let's go. Yeah! So a snow-covered mountain is as much fun as it ever was. Test drive the BMW 5 Series sedan or new sport wagon at your Tri-State BMW Center. Available on home video for the first time ever, Frank Sinatra's Concert for the Americas. This special 90-minute concert features Frank performing hits such as The Lady is a Tramp. She gets too hungry for dinner at eight. This collection is destined to become a classic. I've got you under my skin. It's Sinatra at his finest. Best is yet to come. This is a must for all collectors. Send in the clown. Call now and receive a special companion video as a bonus. Portrait of an Album takes you behind the scenes and into the recording studio with Frank and an all-star cast. For a limited time only, Sinatra's Concert for the Americas and Portrait of an Album are available for just $34.95. For Visa, MasterCard, or American Express, call 1-800-255-7100 or send check or money order today. 
Well, the band enjoying Rutgers' 30-point edge over West Virginia. Time to take a look at the BMW ultimate drive of the game. We'll go back to the first half, Jim. For the most part, the threes have been raining down for Rutgers, but here Greer takes one right through and slashes to the basket. Yeah, it's just been an indicator of what happened to West Virginia's defense today. Just all Rutgers. Armstead strip. Here's Bob. This is going up, Bob. Oh. Off his knee, out of bounds, West Virginia ball. Good prediction, huh? You knew that was going up. Look at them. They're cheering for him. They want to see him get one. Fox is two of four from the free throw line this year. He's yet to hit a field goal. Under one minute to go in the ball game. Rutgers is led by as many as 31. They have a 30-point edge right now. They're led by 27 at the half. Open look, and that typifies the day for West Virginia as Johnson's shot was halfway down. See if they spot up Fox on the wing right. You're going to look for him. Let her rip. Neat. Samuel. Can't get it to fall. Six out of bounds, last touch Rutgers with 25.7 seconds to go. He's dying for Connor Fox to launch one. But now if you're Connor Fox and trying to earn points with the coach, you don't want to look like a hog and you start hoisting him up, right? Oh, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but that's you. Armstead, no good. Armstead again. Blue dunk. 5'11 Armstead. Fans giving him a little job here. They want Fox to get one. Here it comes. You no, know, he's wide open. Here's the three. Oh, a little long. Oh, oh. That was his last chance. Moss. Let's see. They count the basket for Chris Moss. Now the final score. Rutgers 87, West Virginia 61. Rob Hodgson, a career high, 31 points. Did not miss a shot. Made all six of his threes. All 11 of his field goals. And all three of his free throws. The six foot seven senior leads Rutgers to their 14th win of the season and their sixth win in conference play. We'll wrap it up after this timeout.